Hi there. I'm Carol Jurgensen Sheets, aka Carol the Coach, and it's been a long day. It is about uh, 10 17, and I just worked about 10 hours of uh, therapy, an hour and a half of group for sex addicts, and just finished my show of uh, about an hour and 15 minutes. So before I went downstairs and relaxed, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about an email that I got from, from a sex addict who wanted to know how honest he should be with his wife. His name is Tom, and he says, if I can, he said that he's been fantasizing a lot about a manager he met at work. And as a result of that fantasy, he says, the past couple days have been extremely rough for me. I have not participated in any deal-breaking behaviors. And he says, I've honored all the non-negotiables with my wife. But clearly, I am suffering from a lot of fantasies and I don't know what to do with them. He then says, it really scared me that I was willing to throw everything away if she had been willing to go further. He says, I meet with my therapist tomorrow and I feel as though my urges at times are uncontrollable. Carol, I'm curious about what I can do. How should I explain my emotional infidelity, flirting to my wife, or should I? Is there medication that I can take? Well, Tom, that's a great question. And so I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about medications that can be helpful. Um, I said tonight on the radio show that clearly a lot of docs think if they can control the sexual libido, that that will help the sexual addiction and I wish it were that simple that doesn't work so SSRIs are not necessarily um, foolproof there are some that are better than others uh, Zoloft has a pretty good history now you know I'm not a doctor I'm just telling you what has worked with my patients and what psychiatrists in addiction have talked to me about Zoloft, Lexapro, and then there's this medication called naltrexone, and um, addictionologists have been using this medication to stop urges and cravings, and a lot of the men that I've worked with have found it to be really helpful. It works for some, it doesn't work for any, it's not the panacea, but it's certainly worth going to a good addiction psychiatrist or specialists and finding out if that's something that might benefit you because anything that can help reduce cravings and urges is a tool that you want to be able to have in your toolbox. Now Tom said that he'd been flirting with a manager at work and that it had opened up the floodgates for fantasy and I'm here to tell you that emotional intimacy emotional flirting, emotional infidelity, all those things are absolutely unhealthy. If you're single and in early recovery, or if you're married and in any stage of recovery. So, um, his next question is, you know, what can I do about it? Well, he has a CSAT, a Certified Sexual Addictions Therapist, that's great. He um, goes to three SAA meetings a week and has a sponsor. So I would encourage him to do all three things. Talk with a CSAT, this therapist, talk to a sponsor immediately and bring it up in group. Now, he may get different recommendations, different thoughts and different philosophies from all three um, entities, if you will. I would first and foremost 
hear what they had to say about what they do to stop the cravings. And Patrick Carnes says, and you all know that I've trained with him, he's the guru of sexual addiction. Um, he says, urges and cravings are only temporary, but you have to know how to distract yourself. You have to learn how to manage them. And more often than not, you have to break the cycle by diving into your recovery tools, connecting with others in the fellowship, and then doing 12-step work, which that 12-step is giving back. So when you're feeling urges and cravings, the healthiest thing you can do is give back to somebody else. Call somebody else and ask them, hey, how you doing? I'm worried about you. You know, you had some concerns in the meeting. Or, you know, volunteer at your church to do something um, important, you know, meaningful. And then connect. You know, you've been having this connection with a manager and it's lit up the brain um, and the reward centers. Now I'm going to ask you to connect with somebody else and see if you can't substitute some of that face-to-face -face connection in a healthy way. Granted, it does not light up the reward centers in, in the same way. So you may have to do something that you love to do. And here's my homework assignment for you. I want you to write down 50 things that you love to do. I'm 60 years old. I rollerblade. I paddleboard. I'm looking. I make jewelry. I didn't make this. Um, I write. I write columns. I do blogs. I do YouTube. I love to talk to people. I spend lots of time with my friends. I go on dates with my husband. I play with my dog. Anybody who knows me knows that this is my little guy. This is Boo Bear. Boo Bear. Give mommy a kissy. Thank you. And you know, he's a special little guy and he makes me feel good. He makes me feel happy. Okay, Boo, I'm going to put you back to bed, okay? Boo has to sit with me when I'm at the computer. So he sits behind me. It really works on my posture. Down, boo. Good boy. Think about 50 things that you like to do because I'm going to ask you to substitute and light up your brain in so many ways so that when you're connecting with people, you can also couple that with playing guitar, listening to rock and roll, listening to classical music, um, listening to your favorite sermon, uh, turning Joel Osteen on, um, favorite rabbi, whatever takes your mind away from those urges and cravings, okay? That's what I'd ask you to do. But then, most importantly, Tom was asking, should he talk to his wife? Well, Tom, that is between you and your wife. You know, what are the rules? Because in every family, it's different. In some families, between some couples, the wife wants to know everything. Now, I have to tell you, when I'm working with a partner, I say, I don't know that it's so great for you to know everything. However, if that's the deal you have, then yes, you need to tell her. I've got other partners who say, I don't want to know anything but the deal-breaking behaviors. If he didn't cheat on me, I don't want to know it. He's in recovery. He's going to have slips. He's going to make bad choices. If he didn't cheat on me physically with somebody, I don't want to know. I respect that too. And of course, we have all sorts of safeguards for that. You know, I, I really do believe in polygraph tests, not to bust anybody, but to build trust and insurance in the woman that is working and loving the sex addict. So, Tom, I'm going to ask you to make that decision. What does she expect? And most importantly, don't betray her. If she expects total honesty, if she expects rigorous honesty, then I'm going to ask you to share that with her. Okay? And if she doesn't, then, you know, you have to ask your head, hmm, how's this going to affect her emotionally? What's it going to do to her? And what does your gut say? You know, intuitively, what do you know? 
I mean, if this is one of those gray areas, you may have to make this decision on your own. So I appreciate anybody who sends me emails to carol at carolthecoach.com. You can always listen to my radio show Monday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, or just download it through iTunes. I have experts on from all over the world. And thank you tonight for joining me for my last 10 minutes before I go down and just chill with my husband, my puppy, Boo Bear. And um, I just like to relax. That's always a good thing, too. You have a great night, and uh, we'll catch you later for more sex help with Carol the Coach.